seven That's the time we leave at seven I'll be waiting up for heaven Can we reach my railroad track That takes me back I never thought my heart could be so yearning why did I decide to roam? Gonna take a sentimental journey A sentimental journey home Gonna take a sentimental journey a sentimental journey home. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you very much. I mean, that was fantastic and um, a perfect idea. I mean, our, I mean, is this? I mean, in Dylan's case, is this just a sentimental journey? I mean, it's a long one uh, for five albums. But what do we, uh, what do we, what do we think about what he's doing? I mean, anybody would like to start? Anna, you, maybe you want to go first. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, sure. Should I speak into the microphone? Yes. Yeah. Is that the idea? Absolutely. We're, We're being Gosh. recorded to, for posterity. For posterity. Yes. Um, Inaccuracy. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, I think I'm, I feel, I was saying I feel a little bit like an outsider here. Um, I probably come to this from a different vantage point than you guys, but, but, um, but the thing that I actually find myself thinking about um, is these sort of pillars of folk song and standards. And, um, and they strike me as two modes where Dylan gets to be like a practitioner Mm -hmm. And and so it feel that's uh, that's sort of how it feels to me like a return to being a practitioner. I mean, it's funny because folk music I think of as like communally owned. I think less about authorship, you know, when I think of of folk music. Um, and so in a way, that seems like an arena where he's more truly like just like a practitioner in a kind of pure sense. But the the standards, um, and I mean maybe now. <laughs> more than when he was starting out, are sort of communally owned in that way, um, right? And so it feels like a place where he gets to be be that practitioner, like a, you know, and may, I don't know. It's sort of like this balancing of like the myth of the figure with this person who kind of maybe just yeah. wants to be a musician. I also think that, well, you know, listening I to him doing these songs, it reveals the songs in a very different way. And I think it's part of his plot here or, or whatever he's up to because when you hear that craggy voice singing these beautiful melodies, it's, it, there's a disconnect, and yet the disconnect is that you get to listen to these songs in a way you've never heard them, and the lyrics, uh, you know, someone who was so, you know, built his career on insane lyrics and stream of consciousness almost, um, stuff going, you know, flying, o I described as lyrics flying over my head because I couldn't even grasp them. And here he is singing these beautiful romantic lyrics that are so finely crafted. To me, it, it, it reveals, it's, he's revealing these songs in a very different way. And, and Bob has just found yet another way to connect with a lot of people and, and a, a way to express himself that you know, at first I, got, I was bewildered, and then now I'm I'm just totally getting it because to in and here I am learning some enchanted evening. I mean, this was a song. <laughs> this is a song. You know, my un, and you know the, the five records that were underneath my record player and my parents own. You know, one was South Pacific, and that this song is from that that uh, play and movie written right at the end of the World War Two, mm -hmm. and you know. If Anthony hadn't asked me to do it, you know, not that particular song, I picked it myself, and because of, partially because of that connection, I said, ah, South Pacific, you know, and and then, um, you know, to actually go back and visit the song and, and see the craft of it, Oscars and Hammerstein and, and the lyric, you know, it, Bob is, yeah, he's up you, to you know what's also with <laughs> Bob uh, Dylan is that, and the other artist that comes to mind is my one of my favorites is Lou Reed. It's really about the phrasing. It's where the words fall. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Um, he waits forever. Like, I was trying to uh, get into the sentimental journey group that he does because he waits a long time before he says certain words. I mean, mm-hmm. that that kind of phrasing is something that was not really done by the Perry Como's Peggy Lee, who I right. studied and did a tribute to. Mm-hmm. It's like those those sw- those are swingers on the beat, you know. And then there's Bob and Lou, uh, someone like Lou Reed. These are artists who really interpret. But with their phrasing, but neither one of them have incredible vocal instruments. Even mm-hmm. if Bob's in tune, right. you can't right. say he has a, a incredible instrument. But he has a genius for phrasing, as Lou Reed did, and that's what really, to me, is the, one of the most impressive things about Triplicate and these last few albums is the phrasing, because mm-hmm. he makes it hip, he makes it cool. Even the songs that, if you sing on the beat, may sound corny, he's playing around with the with the phrasing so that it's not corny. It's not. It's not uh, anachronistic. Well, there's an element in his performance as if he's thinking, like as if the words are just occurring to him, yes. rather than you know he's delivering them. Right. I mean, it, they 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 have this element of uh, the phrasing is, you know, almost conversational, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, and he sings over the bar, and he you know just in his way, he's made these songs very seem very alive. And uh, you know, one of the, one of his turns of phrase, you know, discussing this work was that he goes, he goes, I'm not covering these songs; I'm uncovering them. They've been covered so many times; they're they've been buried. And he goes, and I feel like what I, I'm trying to bring them forward again. And you know, and he talked about melody, and he you know, he talked about um, you know the emotion in these songs. And you know, you do have a sense of um, you know. You have a sense of a life lived when you when you hear him sing these songs. Mm. I think you know. Mm. I mean, you really feel the presence of a you human know, being. Yeah. When he won the Nobel Prize, it never even occurred to me that anybody would find that like even controversial. I mean, it's something that's been talked about for years. Um, but and, uh, but one of the things they noted, and it's correct. I mean, Dylan's approach to language, you know, certainly on those great records. Uh, I mean, the the really classic ones, or the ones that you know Steve worked on. You know the they just, you know, the language on in those songs altered English, you know, the English language. And poets will tell you that, and novelists will tell you that, and songwriters certainly will tell you that. And, you know, so that was the thing, the level of originality. And I don't know how you, I don't know how you do that. I mean, there was an amazing moment, uh, you know, I think it was on, 2020 or 60 Minutes or one of those shows where um, this guy is asking Dylan about writing those, uh, you know, writing a song like um, uh, It's All Right, Mom, Only Bleeding. And Dylan just sat there and goes, you know, darkness at the break of noon, shadows even the silver spoon, the handmade blade, the child's balloon, eclipses both the sun and moon. To understand, you know, too soon, there is no sense in trying. Like, he recited the whole verse, and then he just said... um, I really don't know how I wrote that. <laughs> he goes, I couldn't do it now. I couldn't do it now. Mm. He goes, but then, you know, I, I, I could do it. I could, I could write songs like that. He goes, I did it. I did it once. You know, but I'm, you know, I'm not just capable of doing that again. And it's, you know, it always gets mystical what people talk about, you know, spirits coming through them and, you know, look, I mean, amphetamine had something to do with it. Definitely. <laughs> but, uh, you but know. also, he was go. I, I thought he would go to the library, the New York Public Library, and look for newspapers of a hundred years ago, just to get into the wording. So he would, you know, because he and he would absorb, I believe, different ways of saying things that are have been long forgotten. I think that's one trick. I mean, if there's as a songwriter, I'm always looking for the trick. You know, that one trick I think is to not just write from your own contemporary time, but to look back and see how things used to be said. Like, oh, gather ye, or you know what I mean? Just phrases that he might have taken from a newspaper from 100 years ago. And I think he used to go to the New York Public Library. Uh, is, this, is this true, or is this like a myth, an urban myth? Uh, that he would go I, to the I don't library. know that that's true, but I think it, it is could true. Be true. I think I can, I'll try to research it for you if you <laughs> wanted to know, but I think he would go to the New York Public Library and look at old newspapers. And that's one way to be new, to be new is to find what's been done before also and combine it with something new. I think that's one of his techniques.